30. So we'll call to order the Heritage Preservation Board of Tarpon Springs, January 8, 2018. Roll call, please. Mr. Bolton. Here. Mrs. Portomitis. Ms. Page. Here. Ms. Johnson. Here. Ms. Tarapani. Here. Ms. Bean. Here. Thank you, and we'll uh, move on to the approval of minutes. Review them, and then right. I'll entertain Mr. a motion. Mr. Chairman, I had a couple of minor revisions. Okay. Um, page and paragraph. If you don't want uh, page. Page three, um, under the first sentence of the board discussion, um, I would just like to add to that sentence. Uh, to explain why um, it should not be a two-story structure, and I would suggest that the following be added, because I believe this is what I said at the meeting. Uh, since that height is not consistent with the height and mass of the immediately surrounding area. And you know, do you want to vote on that, or do you want me to do? Is there, why don't we do them all? You okay, three? just so one let's, more. Let's no, do, just yeah. one other. Yeah. On uh, page five, under board comments, the second paragraph, um, I had it says Ms. Terry commented she'd seen there be renovations to the cultural center. I think it'd be good to set the record that to state that the following Mrs. Lemons responded that the cultural center renovations will be reviewed at the January 2008 meeting of the HPB. Can we have a motion for those changes? Um, I'll move to uh, approve the minutes as uh, revised. A second. I would second it. Roll call. Ms. Bean? Yes. Ms. Terrapani? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Page? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. And so those changes have been made. Any other changes? And we have a motion to accept the minutes now that they've been amended. You just move to accept the minutes as changed. That's it? Yes, that's Good. all you need to do. Done. So we're done? With the approval of the minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do I hear a motion? I thought my motion was to approve yeah. the minutes as, as revised. As yeah. so okay, then we're done. We okay, great. Um, so here we go with our organizational meeting for election of chair and vice chair positions. Are there any nominations for chair of the board? You can nominate yourself. You can nominate someone else. Somebody has to be nominated. <laughs> I cannot nominate anyone. Uh, Mr. Bolton, do you wish to continue to serve? I really believe that this is a great board for the chair to change and not always be the same person. It's a great board to get your feet wet, and I would highly encourage somebody to step up. You can nominate someone. As a chair? Yeah. So we don't have anybody that's going to say I'd like to do it. So I'll nominate Ms. Protomitis. Oh. I mean, I am, I'm happy to run to, to serve as chair, but I'm new to the board, so I don't want to step on anyone's toes if someone else um, feels more comfortable uh, being the chairman. Also brand new, so. <laughs> so we have a nomination for Ms. Protomitis. Do we have a second on that? Nomination. I second. Perfect. Any other nominations before the board for chair? Do we know if Ms. Protomise was she the vice chair before? Mm -hmm. Oh, do we think she's willing to serve since she's not here? I guess she doesn't have to be here to get. <laughs> if nominated. you're not here, you <laughs> be careful what happens if you're not here. <laughs> All right. If there are no other nominations, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. We have a chair. Someone will let her know. <laughs> All right, do we have any nominations for vice chair? Well, if no one else is interested, I will volunteer to serve as vice chair and, and learn the ropes um, of the board, unless there's other interested parties. I'll nominate Ms. Terpani for okay. vice chair. Do we have a second? I second. All right, any other nominations for vice chair? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Congratulations. You are now vice chair. Do we adjourn and readjourn? No, you can save it for the next meeting. <laughs> Backing up, moving on, moving on. If you want. Okay, no, we'll just move forward with this agenda. Um, 
can we have our quasi-judicial announcement, please? This is a quasi-judicial proceeding where the Heritage Preservation Board acts in a quasi-judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At a quasi-judicial hearing, it is not the board's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. In a quasi-judicial hearing, the board is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the Code of Ordinances in order to make a legal decision regarding the application before it. The board may only consider evidence at this hearing that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. By the same token, if the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence at the hearing demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria established in the Code of Ordinance, then the board is required by law to find against the applicant. Are there any members of the board wishing to disclose any ex parte communications or conflicts of interest this evening? Seeing none, anyone who is wishing to speak this evening, applicants, witnesses, or members of the staff, please stand and raise your right hand to be sworn in. <clears throat> Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. You are so sworn. So we'll move on with our first application. Okay, the first application is for the screening and covering of an existing package attached to the back. Is your microphone on? We can barely, I can't hear you. How do I know if it's on or not? I think it's on, you just gotta move it closer. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Not yeah, better. Speak up. Okay. You have to project a little bit. So the first application is for a screen and roof over an existing patio attached to the back of a duplex. This site is the protected address site, so I want to add a little bit of context for the board um, to understand the neighborhood a little bit better. This section of the historic district is pretty eclectic with various styles of architecture ranging from 50s masonry vernacular like this one to um, early 1900s frame vernacular and 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 several variations in between. There are lots of accessory structures there with carports and lean-tos and screen patios and single car garages. Most of them have pitched roofs like the proposed structure in this case. There's a mix of roofing materials as far as the texture goes. There's metal, shingle, um, this patio, the existing patio, and the proposed screen fall well within the um, required yards as far as the setbacks go on this lot. The accessory, well, it's not an accessory since it's attached, but it's clearly subordinate to the primary structure. So the roof line is lower, even though the roof line matches, it's lower than the primary structure. It falls more narrow than the primary structure. Directly to the west of the uh, subject property is a wooden metal carport um, storage type structure that's taller actually than this one and taller than the existing one. <clears throat> Two doors to the north is a covered patio with a pitched roof. Three doors to the south is an aluminum carport. So hopefully I'm painting a picture that it's, it's a fairly um, diverse neighborhood architecturally. And the way this one appears to me is that it would um, they would easily fall within, within something that's compatible with the neighborhood and compatible with the, ex the surrounding contributing structures. Staff recommends approval uh, to screen and cover the existing patio, um, subject to the condition that a building permit is required and the applicant is responsible to obtain proper permitting through building development. Thank you. Does the applicant here that would like to speak say anything? Please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Or and your address, if your address is protected, you can state protected yeah, address. Just, Both my home address and the address of this property, I'm protected. My husband is a judge. That's on the record. Okay. Thank you. Yes, my name is Nancy St. Arnold, um, but. Boyles is the one that's going to do the screening, so he can answer your questions better than I. 
Thank you. I don't really have much to add. I think she did pretty much everything for us. If you had any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Are there any questions by the board? Mr. Chairman? Yeah. I do have a couple of questions. Um, the sketch that we received in the photographs, uh, especially the sketch, it's a little unclear to me. Can you confirm, will the screen room be installed directly on the existing knee wall? Yes, it will. And it will not extend further uh, beyond either in any of the three directions from the existing knee wall? Just the, the roof itself will extend one foot over on all three sides just to give a overhang past the wall itself. Okay, but the vertical portion of the screen is it, it's sitting right on top of the um, of the existing Block knee wall. wall. Correct. Um, just for the record, I just think that um, it was really difficult to review this application. I generally understand, although I don't necessarily agree with the protected status issue. I'd maybe like to ask Ms. St. Arnold, is this your home residence no. where you live? No. no. So it's a rental property? It is a rental property. Okay. It's 222 and 224 two, 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 Banana Street. Sorry, 22 and 24 what street? Banana Street. Banana. Thank you. Um, because it was protected and because we didn't have the address, we as a board, it was really difficult because of the way the sketch was drawn to tell that that um, screen room was going right on top of the knee wall. It was really a little tricky to tell that that was what the application was for. Um, and I would be um, less concerned about it if it were an interior lot, but this is not. It has an alley to the south and, you, and the alley is in use, as you well know, and probably the rest of the board knows the alley is actually paved. Um, and serves as the access to the parking for the for the duplex. So that was my concern originally that it um, I really couldn't tell for sure from that view from that public side whether or not you know how the screen room was coming down. And then I, I had one question for the staff if I might, um, unless um, yeah, Miss Wagner, um, as I understand the protected rule, you knew the address and you went to the site. Is that correct? Yes. And just tell me a little bit about what you saw when you went out there and how you think it fits in with, um, it fits the standards that we have and fits in with the neighborhood. Well, so like I say, the area is fairly eclectic in architectural style. There are lots of accessory structures and um, smaller buildings. So the way I see this one, even though it's attached, um, because it is clearly subordinate, I sort of see it as a blend of accessory structure and 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 what, we, what we've got here. And all of those accessory structures have similarly, most of the accessory structures have similarly pitched roofs. They're single story, um, like the garages are single car. So this is, um, I find it to be very consistent with what you see there in the neighborhood. I don't know if that's enough or if you want me that's, to. That's good, I just wanted to confirm that you had, you as the staff on our behalf had been to the site and had made your staff recommendation based on a site visit as well as a review of the criteria. Yes. Thank you. I'd say, <clears throat> if I could say also, wouldn't you say that behind there, there's an extension of the next door property and the way that that's extended leaves a big nice gap between the two structures so that if this is built, it's not really seeming like it will impede or right. anything there's like a, that. There's a considerable amount of space, so there's plenty of clearance. I, I'm just going to make a statement, um, or you know what, we'll, we'll, we can say, I'll say that later. Are there any other questions by the board? Do we have anybody from the public that would like to speak in favor? Do we have anybody from the public that would like to speak against? So public comment is closed at this time. Thank you. You guys can be seated. Um, I went out to the site. I, I don't think... Um, Anybody that's from Tarpon or been in Tarpon a long time, I would be surprised that you couldn't find this site. Um, does everybody have this? I think it's pretty clear that the screen comes to the knee wall that's there. I don't see any way to not understand that. Um, at the corner of Bay Street, where Bay, Lime, and Spring come together, there's a rental property that's three units, and it has an accessory structure in the back that fronts Bay Street which is not an alley, and it has a screen enclosure on it. So I, I find this to be completely consistent with 
the fruit bowl district um, of having the screen structure from what I could see. So that's, those are my comments. And um, if there's any other comments, we'll entertain a motion. I make a motion that the application at this protected address be approved as submitted. And just for clarity of the motion, can we just put the application number in there as well? 17-114. Thank you. Okay. There was a second. Okay. Roll call, please. Miss Bean? Uh, yes. Miss Terrapani? Yes. Miss Johnson? <clears throat> Miss Page? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. So moving on to application 17 122. Thank you. All right, application 17 122 is for the Tarpon Springs Cultural Center at 101 South Pinellas Avenue. This Application is seeking a certificate of approval for rehabilitation. And I want to point out that it's um, consistent with the rehabilitation defined in the, des defined in the design review guidelines manual on page 20, where um, the building is being brought up to contemporary standards for more efficient and lasting use while maintaining and protecting the architectural character and defining features of the building. The architect is here and a representative from the city is here to discuss the technical details of the rehabilitation. The staff recommends approval of the application because we believe that the proposed rehabilitation meets the Secretary of Interior standards for rehab. Good evening. Tom Function, Public Works Director. Thank you. Uh, I'm here, uh, of course, as a representative of the city, and I have uh, Vivian Salega from Atlier architectural firm, she's going to do a presentation on the building. Uh, pretty much the same type of, in a, in a sense, the same type of work we had done in this building a couple of years ago. So I'm going to leave it to Vivian. She, she'll, she's the expert here. Um, good evening. Vivian Salaga, 5102 North Central Avenue, Tampa. Um, as an uh, overall summarization of the work to be performed at the Cultural Center, it serves first and foremost to stabilize, waterproof, and repair the exterior of the building in accordance with the Department of Interior's standards for historic rehabilitation. We have used the National Park Service's technical preservation briefs 1, 2, 9, and 20 um, and referenced these in writing our technical specifications and um, one and two involves brick cleaning and, um, and uh, tuck pointing. Nine is in reference to treating windows, wood windows in historic buildings. And 20 deals with slate roof repair. And there are three primary components to the uh, rehabilitation at this property. And they are... They include the roof and the gutters, the brick facades, and the windows and the doors. At the roof level, there is serious deterioration of the wood balustrade surrounding the cupola, um, including missing spindles, deteriorated trim work. Um, the wood trim at the eaves uh, is, is delaminating. Um, not only at the cupola, but if you've all seen the property, you can see that it's happening on the eaves and at all of the wood trim around the entire building. Uh, we are proposing to have all of the original wood stripped, sanded, repaired. If it is discovered that there is rotting beneath the, the paint as it's being, being stripped from the building, then they, uh, the wood can either be repaired if it is not terribly extensive or it will be replaced in kind to match the original configurations of the trim and then repainted. And unfortunately, those are some things that we are not going to be able to know until it's actually discovered in the process of doing the stripping of the paint. 
The cupola dome is actually a metal structure whose paint coating has delaminated over time, and the project will clean and strip the paint from the cupola and refinish it with a material to accentuate the metal finish. At the flat clay tile roof itself, a roof inspection report was completed, a very extensive roof inspection report, actually, that revealed while the roof is in particularly good condition with no evidence of roof leaks, there are areas of cracked roof tiles and deteriorated grout valleys, which you can see in the right-hand slide slightly. Um, these will be able to be replaced and repaired on an as-needed basis without having to incur the expense of an unnecessary whole-scale roof replacement. The drawing prepared uh, by the roof inspection company has identified in all the little red triangles um, the repair work uh, and this drawing has been included in our permit set of plans that will be going to the building department. It uh, specifically makes notations to the type and extent of the roof repair at each of those locations. The roof report also indicated that as of the date of the report, there was a 10-year useful life remaining with these repairs. The entire perimeter of the roof eaves house a copper gutter box feeding into several copper downspouts around the perimeter of the building. The roof report indicates that at the corners of the eaves, the solder has failed within the box and causing the rotting conditions at almost every corner and in areas adjacent or near to the downspouts, they are recommending that um, the joints be resoldered and that the eaves um, be repaired and repainted once the resoldering has taken place. They do not feel that the existing copper gutter is in a deteriorated enough condition to be replaced except to be resoldered at each of the four corners. The brick facades show very limited minor cracking that can be corrected with epoxy grouting at those few locations. And when we were doing this, you could see, I don't know if this is working or not. It failed me before. It's not. Um, uh, up in the upper left-hand corner of the second story of the southern segment of the building, there's some slight cracking near the window on both, um, at both windows, which of course is also causing some moisture intrusion into the building. And the second floor interior plaster is um, spalling from the interior walls as a result of that. But as soon as those are sealed and epoxied, it will stop the um, interior migration of, of the moisture. Um, the building's brick facades will all be cleaned of all discoloration, efflorescence, paint, um, plaster, and repointed and sealed with a clear sealant to prevent any future moisture intrusion through the face of the bricks, which are themselves, they're very porous, um, and, and or the grout joints. And they are, will be doing a method similar to what was done on this building at, this, at the City Hall. The window replacement and door refinishing represents a large portion of the proposed corrective work. Much research has been done to come to a solution that would retain the integrity of the historic window and door configurations of the original building while providing necessary increased energy efficiencies to the building. There are three pairs of double wood doors, um, three single leaf doors, wood doors, 
and one pair of metal exterior doors that you can see in the, the right-hand most photograph uh, to an electrical equipment room that is not a part of the historic fabric of the building. The metal doors will be replaced. All of the exterior wood doors um, upon inspection actually proved to be in good condition and are not rotting. The deterioration that you see at the bottoms of all of the doors is really um, paint spalling off of the surface of the, the door structures, but when we probed them, it didn't, they had, had no termite damage and, uh, and no rotting. Some of the trim that you can see in the center photo is a bit rotted at the trim places that will be replaced in kind to match the original configuration of the trim. Uh, the leaded glass uh, windows and transom of the two main double entry doors are unique and they are a very important character defining feature of um, this building. So these doors are going to be removed, um, stripped, refinished, and then reinstalled back in place. The, they will be removed one at a time so as to not interrupt the daily functioning of the building. And uh, when they are reinstalled, they will be reinstalled with added additional weather stripping to prevent air infiltration and drafts. The security system that is presently in place on the doors is currently um, scheduled to be disengaged during the door's removal, but then reconnected once the door is put back into place. As to the windows, there are 38 windows in this building. 36 of these windows are true divided light, 8 over 8, wood double hung windows with weight box operation. Uh, they are painted white on the exterior with a dark stain finish on the interior of the two-story southern segment of the building. And they are painted white both, oh, whoop, too far, white um, both interior and exterior in the auditorium on the uh, northern segment of the building. All of the windows on the exterior have a unique wood brick mold configuration, and that will be stripped, sanded, and refinished. Where evidence of rotting prevents refinishing, the brick mold will be replaced in kind to match the existing configuration. Existing exterior window sills are all concrete. Some have cracks, as you can see in the leftmost photograph. Uh, all of them are spalling paint. Um, they will be patched and refinished. The proposed new windows are simulated divided light, double hung, eight over eight, wood windows, finished on the exterior with a factory finished white aluminum cladding and um, factory finished stain on the interior to match the dark stain of the original windows in the two-story segment and in the auditorium segment of the building. The windows again will be aluminum clad on the exterior and painted white wood on the interiors. All the new windows come with the added benefit of being thermal pane, low E clear solar protection on the glass, and certified impact resistance to the state of Florida standards. The details created for the installation of these windows has carefully included the retention of the weight boxes within the frame of the windows so that the historic configuration of the window remains as part of the window casement, albeit now non-functioning. We've worked very closely with Ralph DeLeon, the uh, representative from Marvin Windows, in order to make certain that the appearance of the windows, uh, the replacement windows, is a match to the historic detailing in scale, dimension, and configuration. Um, the contract documents show uh, in very clear details the retention of the, 
the window box, the configuration of each of the, the different window types, um, and the samples that Mr. De Leon has brought this e e evening for your review demonstrates this compatibility. Good evening, my name is Ralph DeLeon. I'm from Window Classics. I'm the regional manager, and we're at uh, 912 Channelside Drive, Suite 1201, Tampa, Florida. I brought um, some literature for you. I thought there was only five members for some reason, so you'll have to share a little bit. I'll hand them out. Just these five is fine. Somehow I ended up with Everybody has? <laughs> yep. <clears throat> this board has approved Marvin windows in the past for this building. The windows that I'm going to talk to you about tonight are uh, similar in construction to the windows that are installed here. The functionality is what's different. We're taking the same materials and making a double hung window instead of a casement and casement picture windows like we have here. Uh, but the detailing, the fit and finish, the colors, things like that are um, same to what you see in this building that we finished last year. Um, the exterior of the windows is an extruded aluminum clad frame and sash. Uh, there, the finish on the windows is an AMA 2605 Kynar finish, which is the highest grade finish that we can apply to the window. It's a standard finish for Marvin. Um, I brought some color chains that maybe y'all can pass down. Just, I know you're using white, but you can see the, the sheen on the white. On the interior of the downstairs, um, we're using a um, stain that's done in the factory in an espresso finish because it is the closest match uh, to what you have now. The reason for a factory finish is that we are able to condition the wood uh, in the factory and apply um, stain to all sides of the wood pre-assembly so that when things move in the field, uh, contract, expand with thermal and moisture changes, you won't have any of the unstained edges showing at the corners of windows. So uh, Vivian and I were at the plant, um, I think a month or two ago, maybe two months ago. And, and uh, she was able to see um, this happening in person uh, with the six sided finish of all the parts uh, and, and, and how we um, produce those stained parts. So uh, it's an Axo Noble finish. It is only applied in a factory controlled environment, so we can't do it in the field. Um, and uh, for any trim that has to be replaced uh, in the field, uh, we do offer color matching uh, codes to match to Sherwin-Williams stains. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the uh, upper floors, uh, are we going to do the, inter the paint on the inside, or are you doing that here? Do you no, know? You're, you're, you're going to do it? Okay, so we don't need to talk about the interiors. Um, I'll pass that down so you can take a look at the stain. Um, the, and I'll demonstrate the window in just a moment. Um, the, there is an option, and I don't know if it's necessary for the city or not, and we'll have to discuss it, which is to put window opening control devices on the windows so that when they unlock, they'll only uh, go up four inches, um, which meets the life safety code to, uh, for fall prevention. Um, it, it's an available option on the window, and if not, the windows are designed uh, in such a way that when you unlock the window and open it, uh, when you lower the window again, it automatically goes back to the locked position. So there's <coughs> never a situation where someone forgets to lock a window. Uh, it's an automatic locking window. Uh, this is Marvin's newest window. It's called the Clad Double Hung Next Generation 2.0. Um, we had a 1.0 that was out for a couple of years. Then they tweaked it, figured out all the little things that people didn't like about it. Um, and about a year ago, uh, introduced this window, which 
has just been leading the industry since the last International Builder Show. Um, so I'll, I'll take a moment and One. Um, if you can step back to the podium so that when you answer, so it's all recorded, please. So does that complete your presentation? I, I did leave out the shades, which I think is what she's going to ask about. The, the, the reason that I brought the shades is that in the auditorium, there is um, 
there are some windows. Did you want to speak to that? Right, right, right. The auditorium right now has um, very heavy curtains that are um, not in great shape. And this particular window has an option to, um, on the interior, to have a blackout screen um, added to the interior face of the window. But when the screen is up, it becomes invisible to the eye, and it looks like it's just a bar of the wood at the very top. So I can show that to you, um, and then I'll hand this around. The, the material itself is uh, Hunter Douglas blind material, pleated blinds, uh, Marvin licensed from Hunter Douglas. They send the sheets to the factory. The rest of it is completely assembled in the factory. Um, and what Vivian was referring to is that when you, when you close the shade, there's a stack cover that gets it out of the way completely. You can't see the shade and you can use it from the bottom up or top down. Um, I, I've had some homeowners that use this and they express some concern about dogs getting to them. And usually what we do is, you know, show them that it, it, it's a very resilient screen um, and it comes back to its natural shape very easily. This one happens to be a light filtering screen, but it, it, the other option is to use it honeycombed with the silver inside the foil to make it a blackout. Um, it would take a, a, just a slight bit of planning on our part because you need a, a 6 and 9 sixteenths jam on the window instead of a 4 and 9 sixteenths to use it. Um, but that's a minor detail in the big picture. It, it would allow the building to you know, delete all of those heavy curtains that are everywhere and have this as an alternative. Um, so uh, I'll hand this around. You guys can uh, take a look. Uh, I have one more question about that. Okay. Maybe Mr. DeLeon or Ms. Salaga, can you confirm which windows will are you proposing to put the shades on? Is it only the windows in the auditorium or some other parts of the building? Correct. Only the windows in the auditorium. Un unless, well, and that's an option that has to be decided by someone else, but we wanted to show you what it was. Um, now, I know that in the Cultural Center southern side, they've got Venetian blinds in there right now. But part of, um, and, and we don't know if the board of the Cultural Center even wants this option. They haven't seen it yet that I th know of, did they? Uh, no, I sent, the, I sent them the information on it, but they haven't seen it, physically seen it yet. So we, tonight I just wanted to present it as an option so that when it comes up, everyone's familiar, they've held it and touched it and seen it. Um, it's, a, it's a high quality option. Um, you know, Hunter Douglas is probably the best fabric you can buy. Uh, everyone knows their blinds and um, for us to be able to put it in the windows is a pretty This is an interior. It's an interior it's application. An interior. I'm not sure that's in the purview of this board to handle finishings on the inside of the building. Yeah. So I just didn't want okay. you to have to. Great. It, there are no um, there there are no insect screens being proposed for the exterior because there were none historically. That that concludes my presentation. Does anyone have any other questions? Board uh, questions. I do have some questions, but not okay. for Mr. Leon. Probably for um, Ms. Salaga, maybe Mr. Funchen. Um, a brief. A little bit of history. Um, as long as I've lived in Tarpon, and I did serve on the board previously, and when I wasn't on the board, I watched the board agendas and participated where I thought I should participate. Um, every time there was a proposal to replace windows, there was a study and an analysis of the, the level of deterioration of the windows, and I don't see that in this application. Is there some other material that is not included in our app review tonight? No, when um, the RFQ was uh, was advertised, it was for window replacement. It was not for uh, refurbishment of the windows. And I believe that some of the genesis of that was that in order to achieve the energy efficiency that they were hoping to get, um, they could not do that with the existing historic windows. 
because of the infiltration of the light, the um, coefficient of efficiency on the glass that's there uh, could not be accomplished in any other way. They have, the city has come back and put some kind of like a 3M film on the windows to try and help that. Um, but the film deteriorates from the ultraviolet light over time and then ends up bubbling up because of the temperature differential from the inside to the outside and when the air conditioning is running. So um, I, I, Tom might be able to speak to that better than I, but it seemed that by the time it's reached this level, the city had determined that they had evaluated every possible method of, of fix and wanted to do it completely right the last time. And Mr. Function, can you please say as the um, owner's representative, the owner being the city, whether an evaluation of the, t the level of deterioration of the windows has been done? Well, I didn't do the evaluation myself, or any evaluation on myself. It was more for the experience we've had, including this building here with the same type of, same similar type of a window over here. We found out when we pulled these out over here, the deterioration behind the windows was pretty uh, exclusive, as if anyone had a chance to see it. Well, uh, I, but there's no data before us tonight that sh speaks to the deterioration of these windows. And frankly, I've driven by and walked by that building multiple, multiple times, and I don't see any deterioration. I see deterioration that can be fixed and in fact our design guidelines speak to that we'll talk about that a little later but yes there is peeling paint just like there is peeling paint on the doors but all that is repairable so why was that not considered There's, by there, the city there is also some uh, damage on the interior of the windows from the uh, from water intrusion from around the outside of the windows especially on the second floor but that can be repaired that's not something that can never be, that can be fixed, anything correct? Anything can be fixed, yes. There's also the, the cost factors involved in, in it, too. So we looked at that. What's the, what's the cost um, of this contract, please? At this contract, I don't know. I know my experience with this building here was additional. If we rebuilt the windows inside, it was going to be about additional $1 million in cost, which would add about a third to the cost of the building. Well, honestly, I guess I shouldn't even ask the question because really the cost um, does not enter into our evaluation. But again, I don't see any analysis before us today, and I don't see any analysis based on my looking at the building to show a deterioration beyond repair. And I would just call the board's attention to a couple, well, we can talk about when we get to that. But so what we've established is the city sent out an RFP um, asking for architects and builders, I assume, to respond to window replacement only. And then the other items that you've discussed tonight, repair the doors, the brick repair, I think most of that is um, pretty straightforward. But there was, the city has not done a true evaluation by a qualified professional as to the deterioration of the windows. No, we did not do that. Thank you. Not, no, 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 we did not. Are there any other board member questions? I'm sorry, I did have one more, not about windows. Sure. Ms. Salaga, can you clarify on the, what are you doing around the baluster, baluster or balustrade, whatever it's called, around the top, around the clock tower? Um, the, the clock tower is, is made of wood, and it's going to be scraped and painted and, um, and refinished. And the, so the wood... The, the, the dome itself is steel, so it will be cleaned and, um, and burnished so that it can take a, a metal coating to bring it back to look like the metal it is. Okay, but I, I guess I was confused. There's a note on page A31. It says, um, remove all balusters and top cap at clock tower. I'm assuming you're gonna remove it and then Repair it? That's the part I'm not sure. Yes, clear and, re about. and rebuild it. Because if you look at some of these, let me go back to the very beginning here. Whoop. Go back, go back, go back. Um, there are many, m many of the balusters are missing, as you can see in these photographs. And the, um, the, the top cap and the bottom have been deteriorated to the point where, I mean, they have suffered significant rotting and deterioration. So those need to be replaced. 
And so you're going to recreate in wood the same in baluster. Wood. Right. So there's enough baluster there to be able to take that and get that same um, silhouette or format, or whatever you want to call it. Correct. And, then, and Correct. then recreate those in wood for the ones that aren't existing. It looks like more than a lot of them. <laughs> well, have yeah, um, yeah, more than half of them are missing. Mm -hmm. But it'll be recreated in wood. Correct. As the original material. Right. Thank you. Pressure treated wood this time. <laughs> Any other board comments? I just want to clarify there's no, um, I didn't see anything in here, so I just want to make sure and clarify there's not any um, like uh, foam, stucco, foam over foam anywhere no. to be used on no, this. No, we're not. Um, we're not proposing to use Phipon or okay, foam. Okay, Thank you. Okay, just want to clarify. It would be nice because it'll last forever, but it is not terribly. Um, Unless something brushes up against it's, it. Yeah, it doesn't it's just last it's not it's not what the Park Service would approve if we were asking them. <laughs> oh, any other questions from the board for that? Do we have anybody from the public that would like to speak in favor of this? Do we have anybody from the public that would like to speak in opposition to this application? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record, and you'll have two minutes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. Anita Prost, 901 Bayshore Drive. I did not know this was on the agenda. I came for something else, and I'm appalled. And I would like to have some extended time as a former mayor and former commissioner who went after the grants and the destination of historic preservation on this building through the 80s and 90s. When we got this, we won awards because Tarvin Springs really held on to his, its, its historic building and the features of the building. Uh, last year or a year and a half ago, the windows were changed in the Fernald building uptown. Special glass. People pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for those panes that you can't find anymore. I came to the city to see if it had come before this board and why they allowed them to change it. And I was told by the gentleman in the, in the city office, well, I didn't know it had to go in front of the, uh, the board. Yes, it did. But it was too late. We've lost in the Fernal building because the glass was gone, it wasn't repaired properly, and he didn't put in the historic again. I came up over a year ago and said, where's the maintenance on the old city hall? Because I could see around the windows. And you said it was going to be done. But I haven't seen a study for the public to look at. And let me tell you, we're going to lose our historic destination on these buildings. These windows are nice, but you follow historic preservation like I do around the south, out west, all over, even in the north with the storms right now. They don't change like this because you lose. And once you lose, you can't replace it back to the old. It's gone. Do you know how many communities are sorry now that they've let their historic preservation lapse and they can't retain it anymore? We're losing in Tarpon Springs. There's a cancer in this community that they don't want to continue and keep historic preservation. I see it every day. I'm historic. I remember going there as a little girl to meetings with my grandfather. Those windows are very important that we have there. And you can repair them and keep the beauty of your historic preservation. When I got out of office, all maintenance stopped on it. That's your professionalism in the city. And you know what I mean by that. Don't let all of this happen and lose what we've got in, in, our, in our historic buildings here in Tarpon. These windows are wonderful. I wish I could have them in my house. The drapes in the auditorium, there's a reason for them. That's what they have in all their historic buildings and their historic auditoriums. The blinds, they have them because they're historic and they were there years ago. We tried to keep it to where it was. We need to repair the windows that are there now, do it properly, keep the glass panes that are there now, and take care of them. When they put the shield over it, we raised all kinds of cane because it never came before the board to do it historically 
and your, your merits for preservation, you could have lost. We're, we're walking on thin ice in Tarpon Springs. We're losing a lot of our historic here in Tarpon. And I know when I'm gone in the next five years, who knows well, who the hell's going to happen in Tarpon. I can't control it. But while I'm here, I'm going to come and speak out because we are unique. You don't find that city hall anyplace else. You don't find the history that went on in there. You don't find the old windows, except in these old buildings and these old communities. Don't lose the treasures that you have. I think it's nice. I'm sure she's very professional. She wouldn't be successful if she wasn't. But this we do not need. We need to keep what we have. We need to repair. We need to save the glass that we have. You can't buy it. Salvage companies can't even get it hardly anymore. It's special. It's beveled. You go look out of it and you see. I urge you to say repair what we have to repair, but repair the windows to keep the historic windows that we have in there and keep the historic destination of this building because it's so important to Tarpon Springs. Thank you. Thank you. May I make uh, a comment, please? Yeah, I'll allow it. One of the reasons for looking at an, an alternative window is that the current building code will require on the if the historic window is kept that a hurricane shutter be applied to the outside of the building somehow some way and if you recall i mean you may not be as familiar with a lot of the national park services documents there are very few hurricane shutters that meet the standard of the national park service in order to not be damaging to the uh, the historic building by replacing the window with a certified window that is an exact duplicate of the historic window it allows the city to be able to meet the hurricane standards because tarpon springs is in an, in a debris borne area zone for the and a 185 degree, uh, uh, 185 mile per hour wind zone. And it's trying to marry the need for keeping the historical configuration of the building while still being able to meet the building code requirements for hurricane protected windows. Thank you. Um, no, we're not going to go back and forth, back and forth. But we're, there is a solution to that. Okay. I, I, Thank can I you. leave you with one more piece of information? I, I don't need to speak again, but I'll just. You can hand it out, please. Yeah, it's just one piece. I'll just give it to you because it, okay. it discusses some of the. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Um, she, she's technically not a witness. Right, she's not a witness. Um, so public comment is closed. I just want to, before we get going, I just want to, I'm not sure if all the board has the guidelines, and so I just want to read from the guidelines quickly of what we're supposed to, um, the process that's supposed to happen when something like this happens. Just before reading that, I wanted to clarify, because there was comments made to this building, and when this building came before the historic board, it was more of a... Um, we're an advisory board, but it was more just to kind of get our idea because we were told that this actual building does not lie within the historic uh, district of Tarpon Springs. Is that correct? It does not. The property we're talking about tonight, it's individually listed, but it's not within the historic district of Tarpon Springs, right. but it's individually listed on the guidelines. So that was kind of why they came to us, even though it was outside of the district property that we're talking about we're done with public comment and we won't probably need you so if you want to relax you can um so th the building that we're talking about tonight is within the historic district of tarpon springs okay excuse me david so, just since i went on the board so are you saying that when the city said they were planning to make the improvements to the building we're in the current city hall the old high school correct because it's not in the historic district and we all recognize that the city just brought it staff brought it to this board for 
review or a discussion comment, item, discussion. review and comments, and the attorney at that time said that it was yeah. not. Um, it was a certificate of application. It was the same process that we're doing today because it's on. I'm just saying how it's it was presented the, to us by the. Why was it a certificate time, of so. appropriateness if it's not in the historic district? Because it's it's individually listed. Well, that's incorrect. So we brought it because forward. Just being individual listed on the National Register has no regulatory power. Yep. I probably, guess I'm that's concerned. That's probably why the attorney told us at the time we were advising, even though it may have looked. So did it get so. a certificate of appropriateness or not? And, and regardless this of building. what happened with this building, that's not what you're deciding tonight. So it shouldn't have any impact on what's happening. It on wouldn't this and if the applicant, if the person, if the witness hadn't brought it and made it as part of the testimony, I would agree. Right. But being that it was made part of the testimony, I would say then it is relevant. Uh, but it is how is it part relevant. of the criteria that you're to consider for this particular application? Even this though, is the only is building, this is the only building that the witness mentioned and related so that's the only thing that there was the only building they mentioned to give us an example between the building that we're considering tonight and any other structure was this building so i think this building is relevant okay but the 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 relevancy of whether or not if this building is not within the purview of this board and it did not in in regardless of what happened with it the questions that could have been or can still be asked of the applicant are are there any other buildings okay. obviously um but i i don't necessarily see how and it's up to you guys but right. m in my opinion i don't see how that is relevant to the application that's in front of you well i, I agree my with david I, I just want to know the answer it doesn't necessarily make a dis difference on the new project but we have i have different opinions since i wasn't on the board i'd like to know mr bolton says that this, the current city hall the building we sit in was not reviewed by this board and Ms. Lemons and saying it was. So I'm trying to figure out what happened, just out of a point of order, point of curiosity. So let me just, then you can speak. To, it was brought to us. I didn't remember the document that was in front of us at the time, but I remember very clearly the attorney telling us and staff telling us that it was not in the historic district and we were, it was more of an advisory. If that advisory became something more formal, as a document that's now being said it was approved, that's not the way it was presented at that board. So I'll let you speak. I recall it coming to this board. We'll look up and see if there was a certificate okay. of appropriateness or not. So the main reason I asked is because, because this building was mentioned by the applicant as an example, I was trying to distinguish that this building is not in the historic district. Therefore, I couldn't give it the same weight of a building that is in the historic district. So that's kind of where it's going. To the guidelines, I just want to read this. There are four guidelines. This is from page 24, rehabilitation. Um, there are four guidelines that apply to rehabilitation and maintenance throughout this chapter, except as many required by the building code. Distinctive and historic defining architectural features and materials shall be repaired not replaced. If repair is not possible due to severe deterioration, then replace the feature with the same material, form, design, and color. The mixing and matching of materials to conduct repairs is prohibited. Mixing of materials destroys the architectural character and value of the structure and impacts the quality of the neighborhood. If an entire architectural feature is too deteriorated and replacement of in-kind or same material is not technically or economically feasible, then a compatible substitute material that provides the same design features may be considered. So I just wanted to let the board know it's not I think or I wish or these are our guidelines. So I'll open up for comments. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, I'm very concerned about the windows portion of this application. I, um, let, let's go to the good parts. I think the good parts are uh, the repairs to the clock tower, to the balustrade, the repairs to the brick, um, the, the removal and, re and repair and re-sanding and reinstalling of the wood doors, exterior wood doors, is commendable. All of those aspects of the project are commendable, and I'm glad that the city is moving forward. But the windows on this building, uh, the building we're talking about, not the building we're in, <laughs> the, right. the building under consideration, are a significant architectural feature of the building. 
The old city hall is individually listed on the National Register as well as being in the district. That's a whole, it's a, as we all know, it's a much higher level of importance for that building for obvious reasons. It was the original seat of government for, city, for the city. Um, it's still in use. And I think Ms. Proto's comments about there being grants given, which I know personally, I have personal knowledge that there were state of Florida grants given to renovate that building. Um, I'm not sure the year, but I, I'm sure her time frame is, sounds approximately right. Um, and the building has been there since 1913 and just withstood a Category 4 hurricane and multiple hurricanes over the years. And I appreciate that hurricanes are difficult. We've, we all, unfortunately, just went through that. But it's been there for over 102 years. And I didn't see any windows blown out in the last hurricane. I also know that there are good solutions to a hurricane shutter that will not be obtrusive. I'm sure that multiple people have figured that out on important buildings, as important as this building is to our community. And um, I, I do not think that this application with regard to the window replacement, it does not meet the criteria because there has been no demonstration of severe deterioration of these windows. Are, is there paint peeling? Yes, but that's not significant wood rot. That's not the, the entire window uh, uh, frame being deteriorated. And we've seen those. I mean, y'all have seen it on the board. I saw it when I was on the board before. I saw it when I was just a citizen watching the agenda. Sometimes that does happen, um, but that's not what we have here today. We do not have severe deterioration of a majority of the windows. In fact, I don't even think you have deterioration of any of them. I think you basically have uh, pay, peeling paint and a little bit of lack of maintenance. So. I am not supportive of that. I do not think the window replacement meets the guidelines. And I, uh, I think the city, in the buildings that it owns, needs to set an example and be the best example for preservation in the city, not the worst example. And what this is, of replacing every single window, is the worst example of preservation that I can think of for this building. I'm not supporting the application. Any other comments? Yes. Am I... Um reading this correctly it's on sheet a5.1 it says a window schedule and it indicates all of the windows and what is necessary for each window is that what this report is is that what this paper is it's a schedule I'm sorry sheet a51 yes yes that's the window schedule and it, under notes it says what the damage is or what the repair is necessary right that I, I'm interpreting that correctly okay now there's nothing in the notes to talk about the damage this is just talking about what they're going to do they're gonna keep some parts like if I understand it they're gonna keep the frame opening the same the casement and the trim and the and the window box or the the weight box that's what those notations mean but all of the windows, based on the way that they, based on what we were asked to do, they, all the windows were scheduled to be replaced. Okay, but based on what Mr. Chairman just read to us about only replacing if it's in disrepair, there's nothing listed here that would say that. No. Thank you. And I think you heard Mr. Funchin say that the city had not done an evaluation of the level of deterioration of the windows. And it's not in our packet, so we can't consider it. I was hoping that maybe it had been done and we just didn't get that, but we've heard tonight that it has not been done. The, um, there was restoration done on this building in the past through grant. I think it's an, I agree with Ms. Terrapani that the city should be the standard bearer for preservation, restoration, um, as what's possible, not taking the easy way out. I can't imagine the cost of replacing every one of those windows becoming cost prohibitive and that being a reason for moving that direction because um, I can't imagine the cost of repair being prohibitive compared to the replacement of every one of those windows. Um, and I think it's the city is basically trying to do repair by neglect. In other words, they've neglected the building so long that now it, it, it's a little bit of an eyesore. So um, 
because it has sat there. And I also don't understand the air conditionings in the front of the building. I don't know where those came from or when those got there. But um, that's a different story. But anyway, so um, I, I concur with Ms. Ms. Terrapani. So I don't know if there's a way for us to move forward with the uh, approval of this application impartial or with a... I mean, I'm, I'm certainly willing to make that motion and approve the parts that we think are appropriate and, and recommend uh, and deny the parts that are not. The or the city, the sure. applicant can um, withdraw the application and, and start over. They'll be up to them if they want to start over, if they want to go forward with the portions that uh, are consistent with the guidelines. <clears throat> at this point, they would just, just deny it then at this point. Start over. I would say that there, whatever the motion is made, obviously there can be made a motion for whatever you feel meets the guidelines and approve and, if, and, and not necessarily denying the other portions, just move to approve these specific things. And then that's the motion, if that's what you feel that should be approved. Or you can deny it in total, you can grant it in total. You know, it's up to this board's purview what you want to, what you feel meets the guidelines from the application. So the motion a can be crafted how you see A partial would be it. a motion with an addenda amendment to would be appropriate. Well, and see, um, can I ask the city attorney a question also? Um, so if there's a, a motion to approve some elements and deny some elements, then it's the applicant, which happens to be the city, but it'd be the applicant's decision on whether or not they wanted to go forward with part or none of the project. It's still it's the applicant's decision on how to proceed with the renovation. Correct. So it, it, like any application, if, if you didn't, if you approve this in total, they still have, you know, three years from the date that they receive it to go ahead and get the permitting and move forward. If they choose not to do so, then that, that's ultimately their decision. But they can only move forward with the portions of the application that you approve. That we approve. Um, they mm -hmm. also have appellate rights, so. Sure. Are you ready for a motion, Mr. Chairman? Absolutely. We'll consider a motion. Um, I would move that uh, we approve. Um, and I'm reading from the five requests that are on the first page of the application. Uh, I rec recommend that this board uh, deny the replacement of the windows, but approve the other remaining elements, which include cleaning and repairing of the brick and mortar, cleaning and repairing the existing cast trim and sills, cleaning and repairing the concrete base course, and clean the tile roofing, flashing, and repair the gutter system. And I also believe, parenthetically, before I finish my motion, I believe I heard Ms. Salaga talk about uh, improvements to be made to the roof, and I believe that those are consistent as well. So I would approve, recommend approval of um, all of the elements that are proposed except for the window replacement, as that window replacement does not meet the standards of the secretary's standards nor the city's guidelines. So is it did you, possible? Did you understand that? <laughs> I did, and my my question is because we're not approving anything with the windows, can we include language in that motion that would approve restoration of the existing windows? Um, well, that's so not what the application is for. I think we have to approve or deny what the applicant has requested, right? You you can make the motion as you see fit. So if your motion is to do that, the application was to replace the windows. If you want to condition it and say you cannot replace it, but you can repair it, the other the problem with doing that is then you have to get what what are they repairing it with? Right. So you know, right, there I, hasn't been any testimony I, okay. or, or any. So we'll leave your motion as as in as made. Yeah, and I think that um, just to follow up what um, the city attorney was saying, Mr. Bolton, that if the applicant wishes to come back with an, an amended application to repair, I mean, excuse me, to re, to repair the windows and demonstrate how they're going to repair that, then that would be a new application. They should come back yep. to this board to have that conversation. I and, agree. and I guess in my motion would also, we're also approving the door repair because that is repair of wooden doors and reinstalling those wooden doors. So the only, the way I, what I'm proposing is that the only portion of the application that we are not approving is the window replacement. So I hope that motion For clarity is of the application, or clarity of the motion, um, for the record. So the motion is to approve the cleaning and repair of existing brick and mortar, cleaning and repair of existing cast trim and sills, cleaning and repair of concrete base course, cleaning and clean of tile roofing, flashing and repair of the gutter system, and cleaning and repair or replacement of the doors. Not replacement. Repair. Well, the part of the application was to replace the metal doors with new metal doors. You're, you're correct. I, 
Same car. So we've got to may say re repair of the wooden doors and replacement of the metal doors. Com replacement of the metal doors and denial. And so, and, and, and that would be the motion. You wouldn't have to talk about the windows at all because, and the, um, oh, I believe that's part of the roof. Okay. Well, it does say cleaning and of the tiling roof. So, and also, uh, cleaning and repair of the, what did you say? The ballot, the balustrade, oh, the balustrade mm -hmm. and the, uh, the cupola, the cupola. Uh, did you get that, Kim? That was a pretty long motion. Okay. <laughs> well, I do think it's important to say in the motion, which I did say, that we are denying the replacement of the windows and explain why so that the applicant knows why that there's a well, problem with that it's aspect. on the record as to why you can only make an affirmative. I mean, in this, in this case, I would only make an affirmative motion. I see. Um, leaving out the windows. Um, so you're only, move, you're only moving to approve these certain things so that they can move forward with those things. Um, that would be my recommendation, but I you see. can certainly include that right, in your I'll, motion. I'll amend my motion to, as a city attorney, as recommended. Uh, Roll call. Miss Bean? Yes. Mrs. Terrapani? Yes. Miss Johnson? Yes. Miss Page? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. So let's. And I just, just, to, you know, it's just for the city knows and the applicant. Um, you know, we would certainly entertain some discussion about if there's some windows that are so deteriorated that they need to be re replaced in total with with new wood. I certainly would be open to that, but I think we need to see some analysis of what the status of those windows are before we just do a wholesale replacement. Wholesale replacement. Not and that's, that was that's my concern. Okay, let's move on to application 17-126. So application 17-126 and 17-127 are being presented together. These, this, is, this application is for the construction of two new single-family homes with detached garages and corresponding driveways on what is currently vacant land. In 2003, a certificate of approval permitted the demolition of two single-family residential structures at this location. They were frame vernacular contributing structures, but they were deteriorated beyond repair, according to the records in the file. In April of 2017, conditional use approval was by resolution 2017-06 was granted to allow for the construction of two single-family residential structures with detached garages at this location because it's required in that particular transect code T4A for a single family home to be constructed in this area. The proposed residences are approximately 2,500 square feet, two story homes with dominant front porches and balconies and other styling consistent with frame vernacular architectural style outlined in the design review guidelines manual. The proposed detached garages located entirely behind the proposed residences are single story and approximately 460 square feet. The proposed structures comply with required yards and transect T4A of the special area plan. The roof lines are steep pitched hip consistent with neighboring roof lines. The houses are uh, compatible with the surrounding structures in the neighborhood. And even though the, um, there's no alley access to these lots, so they do have to be accessed from, the, from Orange Street but they've minimized the driveways and they don't widen until they get behind the houses. The landscaping will be required to conform to the landscape standards set forth in the special area plan, chapter four, in, conduction, in conjunction with any additional applicable standards set forth in the land development code. And the transect-based landscape plan is harmonious with the heritage preservation standards for review for landscaping as both call for enhanced applications that contribute to clearly defined outdoor spaces. So staff recommends approval of the application for the construction of two new single family residences with driveways and detached garages under the following conditions. Applicant is responsible for obtaining all required permitting and applicant must provide a landscape plan consistent with the special area plan 4.8. The applicant would like to, is there anybody here to speak on behalf of the applicant? Did you want to speak or? 
Okay. Well, you just stay close then. <laughs> okay. Do we have any board questions of the applicant or staff? Give us a moment. It's not a question. I'm just, uh, I'm familiar with the site and, um, and I really like the idea of having that shared driveway so you don't, you know, overemphasize mm -hmm. <laughs> the driveways. Um, I think it's a good solution. So thank you, Mr. McConey, for that. And um, I was kind of surprised that you were proposing to put a fence between the driveways. Is, do you really think you need that? Or you think that it's demanded in the market? Or I mean, I'm not, just, I just, I suppose it wouldn't, it's not going to, you know, make a huge difference either way i would prefer that you not have a fence but if you think it's needed but it have to be set back to get a higher height isn't that right um miss wagner well it can be four feet in the in the front so anything above four feet would have to be a, out of the front yard setback out of the front yard setback or behind the house out of the front yard setback do you want to come up and um, state your name for the record so you can answer any other questions thanks Mark McConey, uh, 4114 Woodlands Parkway, Palm Harbor, Florida. And again, I'm just here to answer any questions if you have. I'm, I'm not s sold on the fence splitting the, the driveway either. So, And I, I see that you, now that I'm looking at the site plan, it's the whole length of the fence. It would only be four feet anyway. So that relieves my concern quite a bit. I think if... This taller six foot fence, I think it's, it's just not as neighborly. And mm -hmm. but a four foot, I, I, that's fine. I'm not concerned yeah, about no, that. No, I agree. Thank you. <laughs> I, I just have a comment. I think this area of the city is ripe for revitalization and for um, people that are coming in to invest in our community. And these would be two. Um, Homes that um, I think would the area would benefit and it would help. Yeah, we've done. Uh, I did about five of these in Safety Harbor in a very similar situation to proximity to Main Street and the walkability. And for people of my age, aging baby boomers, uh, it seems to be a very popular downsizing type of, of uh, product. So it's it's going really well there and I think it will do well here as well. The only other comment I had is um, I, I just want um, just to, maybe for the record I guess is um, this is new construction mm -hmm. and we do generally allow um, non-historic materials on new construction so I'm seeing that he's using hardy board but he's using it in the lap siding so um, just trying to distinguish this brand new construction from renovation to Correct. existing historic st structures. Um, I think the window fenestration is nice. The, the orientation of the buildings are nice. Um, very consistent with the pattern of development. And um, thanks for bringing the project to us. Thank you. I think it's, it d definitely demonstrates that it's a new structure. So it's not trying to emulate or, or pretend to be something it's not, but yet it fits with the character of the community. So if there's anybody from the public that would like to speak in opposition to this application? Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak in favor of this application? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. The old lady again, 901 Bayshore Drive, Anita Protus. Um, I like what he has designed for this piece of property. Uh, my husband grew up there. There were four houses on that, the, that piece of property. It was the first hospital in Tarpon Springs. And to go up, upstairs for the real sick patients, you had to open a door and climb steps. In the back was a kitchen and a pantry and a little operating room in this little building. Then they had a big garage where they used to take the ambulance back then. And the little house on the other side was where the nurses lived. And his grandfather bought it, converted it into the home for the uh, Protus family to live in, or the Angelitas family to live in. It was next to the church. The community is hungry 
for this type of uh, development. It's uptown. It's going to revitalize uptown. It's close to the church. It's close to the library. It's, it's right in the business district. And to revitalize Tarpon, this is the way to go. And uh, they're doing it in other communities. And again, historically, in uh, Social Circle, Georgia, Savannah, Charleston, South Carolina, if you travel the circuits and read about them like I do, at my age, that's all you do, uh, you see what they're doing. They're designing. The architecture is good. I commend him on his design. Uh, I hope to sell something. Maybe I can afford to live one so I don't kill someone coming over the Ketropal Bridge at 80 years old pretty soon. And uh, you can walk because they'll probably take my license from me. So as people get older, this is what they want. And you're going to be getting another, I guess, if they go through with uh, condos further up on Orange Street. I don't know. They haven't started anything. But what I read is this is the way communities are going. In some communities, people are buying buildings on Main Street, and they're not putting businesses in there, in them. They're making them their homes so they can walk to facilities and be able to get around. So I think we're on the cutting edge of something with what he's giving us, and I think it's going to be a great asset to Tarpon and I hope that we get a lot, more, a lot more development because it's needed, and I hope you can see to pass this for him in the historic district. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, we'll hear a motion. I'll move approval of application number... Seven, he wants two separate motions for the two addresses. You can do one motion for both because they're they're a package deal. Thank you. I'll move approval of application seventeen dash one twenty six and seventeen dash one twenty seven for one twenty nine and one thirty seven East Orange Street for new construction of single family two single family homes. There a second. Second. Roll call, please. Miss Bean. Yes. Mrs. Terrapani? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Page? Yes. Mr. Bolton? Yes. Thank you. Mr. McConey, I think daughter, Michelle, would you tell her David Bolton said hello? We graduated high school together at Tarpon <laughs> and 80 blah, 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 blah. <laughs> 80 something. <laughs> So we'll move on to staff comments. The only thing I want to ask, and I'm not sure if this is an appropriate time to ask a question about one of the previous applications or if I need to ask it individually. Are you asking of the board? Yes. Then this is the appropriate time. Okay. So if the city applies to... Wait, are you asking a question on an application that is going to come before this board, specifically the windows on that? <coughs> Do not ask that question, please. Okay, that is not appropriate. This board can only consider applications that come before it. This board is not to be saying if the city does this, yes, that would be good. If the city does this, no, that would be bad. So this board cannot answer that question, even if it's a hypothetical. Can I ask a procedural question about that? Okay. For the portion of the application for the old city hall that was denied, does the applicant have the right to come forward with a new application? Well, first of all, so the application that's before it, they still have 30 days to appeal. I believe it's 30 in the code to appeal the current decision, I believe, to the Board of Commissioners. So they can certainly do that, or they have the option to bring a brand new application for, and I'm assume it would be specific to the windows, whatever that application is. So yeah, they don't have a, and I, I think it, I can't recall if the code, I'd have to double check it. There may be a time limitation on when they can bring that application when they can't, but um well, since it wasn't denied, since that portion wasn't, it wasn't approved, and wasn't. therefore it was denied. So Is, even though you didn't specifically have it in your motion to deny it, you did not approve that. So that portion of their application was denied. 
So I would assume they couldn't bring the same application back, but they, if they, I mean, they, if they took these comments to heart, they, they, they could, could bring this. I mean, I mean, there's nothing from bringing any applicant saying that they can't bring the same application back. It's just, oh. it doesn't mean that they're going to get a different result, obviously. Right. So. But they, they do have the, the right deterioration to study and all that. Well, right. The application could come back if, if, if. Uh, any applicant wanted, they brought an application before the board, took the comments of the board during discussion, uh, went back, brought a new application before the board for the exact same, you know, thing that they wanted, but took the, the comments to heart and brought additional evidence to support their position. You know, any applicant could do that. So, I'm, and as I'm trying to speak in generalities because I just want to make sure that. Mm -hmm. Is the staff question is a procedural question of how we process information? Well, so I guess it's actually, I could rephrase it as a general question. No, why don't you ask the question, then I'll let you know if they can answer it. <laughs> that might be That's easier. Great, yeah. So in general, when we're talking about buildings with a significant number of windows, so we're not talking about a single family home, we're talking about a, a building with lots of windows. Would there be, or is there precedent somewhere that I could look up um, what percentage, you know, because it talks about not mixing and matching new versus old materials or multiple types of materials. So <laughs> if you had to replace X percent of windows, but you wanted to restore the, the balance of windows, um, like is there, you know, so if you're looking at the face of a building and some of the, some of the windows had to be replaced because they're completely deteriorated, but other, other windows had to be restored because they're not deteriorated enough to replace them. Is there a preference, or which which direction should we lean, or which way should we look to? Okay, so I'm going to suggest that this board doesn't answer that question because that's on an application by application basis. I can speak to that after the meeting. Okay. And I would just say that we're going to be bound by the design guidelines, and design guidelines and the secretary's standards are very clear about <clears throat> analysis that's required to prove a particular issue, and that and it generally relates to a detailed analysis about deterioration and then the amount of deterioration, where it is on the facade, what type of building, are they uh, the original window? I mean, all those factors come into play and we just have to look at each case mm -hmm. you know, on a case-by-case -case basis. I have a question of the attorney. Yeah. Um, in Florida, if the building codes require, like if a homeowner is going to replace a certain number of windows, that if they replace up to a certain number, then the whole house has to be brought up to a certain code. Would that be the standard we would probably use in a in something? Yes, like that? Yes, what you read into the record, that specific guideline except set had made an exception for the, the building codes that are applicable. So if the Florida Standard Building Code said, and I don't know that it does, but if it said if you are going to replace twenty percent of the windows on the home, you then must replace all of the windows right. on the home, then then that trumps whatever the guidelines are for the historic preservation. But also, I think there's a variety of exemptions and uh, alternatives for historic buildings. Correct. I don't personally know if that relates to the number of windows replaced, but there are a lot of exemptions in the building code for historic properties. Correct. There's actually a specific section of the Florida Building Code, standard building, as well as exist the standard code, the existing building code, and um, various other codes specific to historic buildings. It's changed over the last... Mm -hmm. Several iterations of the building code, um, which I, I think is a four-year cycle. But the if you have any questions specific to that, um, you can certainly ask staff, and staff can ask the building official. Definitely something that we should have our opportunity to. Right, and that that's something that would end up having to go through permitting. So mm -hmm. you know, if it, if those are questions that are great to ask, but those the applicant may not have that information at the time. Right. And that would be something that they may come back with a new application and says, this is a requirement that I need to. It would be nice if it was in the packet. But I think staff checks that as well. So that, um, but yes. Good discussion. Any other staff comment? Mr. Chair. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. Karen? Someone. Um, I wanted to show you a sign that was made, a street sign that our public works department um, can make here in-house. This is an example for you to see um, of what we could put on the streets for the historic district. Um, as you can see, they're brown. Um, we looked at another design that would have a little bump up like this and come down, and inside that would say historic district. I think um, that would be great. Yeah, great. Those, that idea. If those are better. They, um, 
they're trying to find them right now. They can't make those, so they have to order that plate, and then they could do the printing of those. So if you think you like that better, then I'll tell Tom to keep. Is that plate going to be? Yeah, it comes. It comes like white? this. It goes up. Um, it would be brown inside, just like this, and the the trim would be white around it. It mimics like a iron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've so seen it would it, look like Savannah has it. In, right. Um, yeah, so Amelia it would be Island white lettering, it. saying white historic lettering. district okay. with a white border and brown inside. Yeah, I like that. And I think that would really set off the historic district. And when you, there's an example in the oh. packet, the one that says East Ferguson. Oh, that's right. It was in there. I did see that. Yeah. I think it's the second to last page of the packet. Oh yeah. I think that helps people oh, yeah. that are in the district have pride and it. It level it raises their willingness or subconsciously want to do more to try and mm -hmm. and and keep the you know things that are special special. So. Is that it? Any board comments? I had a couple of yeah. um, comments or questions. Um, one was um, a thank you to Karen. I, I really appreciate having a written response to the questions that we had from the last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but as I reviewed it, I just wanted to point out, and this was this decision on 218 East Tarpon was not done by any of the current staff. Um, but this is the building where DC's is going into now. It's next to um, Manuel Lindiakis office building. And when you look at the photograph that uh, Ms. Lemons provided us of the building before, it had a, the door was in the center of the building. Now what they have done um, that was approved by the staff with no HPB approval was moving the door to the side and recessing the door, mm -hmm. which is not consistent with what is allowed to be approved by staff. And, and I think there was a misinterpretation by this person, by staff person. What the board, what the checklist says is window and door replacement with the original materials and style is staff. And I, that's exactly what it says. But what was done on this particular case at 218 East Tarpon is not window door replacement with the original material and style. So it's unfortunate that it's done now. It's really mucked up that building. It's, um, it, it could have been a thousand times better, but I don't know that there's much we can do now. But I just I wanted to point that out and make sure the staff noted that, that, that the a previous staff member made a bad decision that we're now going to have to live with. But I appreciate you letting us know what happened because I was certainly curious. I think we all were about about that. Um, uh, I had two other had a couple other questions. Um, I really also appreciated Miss Wagner getting the packet out to us um, right after Christmas. Thank you very much. And if we could do that on an ongoing basis on at least the Monday before the you know, Monday week before the meeting, I think that'd be great. If Monday happens to be a holiday like Memorial Day, I think we all understand it would be, you know, Tuesday. But mm -hmm. having the whole time to look at it, be able to talk to you before the weekend, because then Monday comes and we have our meeting. So if we could do that going forward, I, I think that would be really helpful to the board members and to the applicant too. They, applicants put a lot of time into preparing their application and we want to be able to review it fairly and go out and look at the sites and, you know, do all of our due diligence that we do. Right. Well, that's what the staff's been doing, but I personally think that's way too short of a time mm -hmm. for us to be able to review. And I'm seeing other nods from everybody else on the board. It doesn't give us time to call the city to ask. Yeah, yeah the problem is really if we get it on Friday, and... then we don't have time to call you when we have a question because, and then all of a sudden Monday is here. So I think that's the problem. Those applications are I I don't want I don't ever want And of course, if I can get it out on the mm -hmm. I'm happy to start. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't artificially make that day because I did spend you know, Friday all day. That was Thursday, Friday. I, 
I think the point definitely is the sooner the better. And I'm not sure it's in our purview to dictate when you get the reports out. That's because we're not your boss to do that. So I definitely appreciate Ms. Terapani's bringing attention that we do need it uh, sooner than later would be best. Um, <laughs> and if you could get it to us by that Wednesday, that would be much better than, you know, Friday because we work and then we get home at night on Friday and then we can't call anybody. And then if it's Monday, you might be in a meeting or then we might have a question that would take you longer to research than before that evening's meeting. So, um, it, so yeah, I think what you're saying is, yes, the, we would love that. That would, would be great. Yeah, that'd be great. So, you know, and we know you do, you work hard to do that. Thank you. So a lot of times, I, I think no one picks up. I didn't even know that that was available. I didn't that know was that never either. told to me that it was a possibility. Oh. All <laughs> I was wondering why. <laughs> For I know that the future ideal is to get electronic. We don't have that. But if anyone who just doesn't want to call it, I would. Because I, I try to get the printed tax done. Sometimes it comes out a little later than what Big I deal. mail it. Um, but it definitely gets done. So when you send out the agenda electronically, you also have the, the printed? No, no one ever told me that, but um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I will probably come by and get it rather than printing it at home or the office. Yeah. I used to pick up the printed packages, and I stopped because I would pick up a package, then I'd come here, and there'd be another package for me, and so I was trying not to kill another tree. I'm happy to review it electronically, but it is nice to have the printed pa packet here if we don't have the electronic resources. And then my last is, is a request for a follow-up. When I was looking at um, one of the sites for the meeting today, I saw a building, a brand-new building that I don't think went to this board. Maybe it did. I was kind of surprised <laughs> so I mean it could have come some you know, year or two ago and I just don't remember it the address is 227 Bath Street and it's not there's a house in the front there's a new building in the back that fronts on the alley it actually is immediately adjacent to uh, the first case immediately adjacent to the um, what direction to the <coughs> west of the site that we had the first case we had tonight the protected address it's that new building off the alley that I the don't okay. remember being reviewed. We, I don't remember. We reviewed yeah. it. You did? Yeah. Okay. We did. Um, it was last. Jeez. It may have been May of 2017. Or it may. Actually, no. It was, um, it was earlier than that. It was uh, in 2016 that we looked at that. Because there was a discrepancy about the map about our maps, the numbering of the lots on the maps that are, and where the historic uh, district is on Bath Street and what properties were contributing and what properties were not and the numbering of the, of the maps were incorrect. That all came up with that particular application. Okay. If, mm -hmm. if um, Ms. Wagner, if you could just send me that case, I'd just be interested to take a look at it. Okay. Thank you so much. I had one question I wanted to follow up with, and um, it concerned the structure at Craig Park. Um, was there any additional input or feedback from our suggestion, perhaps to have a landscape architect look at another option? Yeah, it's under review. <coughs> I don't know that there's, if anything's going to be coming forward on that or they're going to try to plant trees and just kind of put on the back burner for now. I see. When we get an application, because um, I, I want to make sure the applicants have complete um, opportunity to be heard and to know if something is like in, our, in a guideline that says um, certain studies are to be done that lead up to it, 
it, can we make sure that's in our app that that's done in, in our application so that that it or do we not is that not reviewed or do we how does an applicant know what they're supposed to put together to bring application forward so that they don't get sidelined because something's missing well are you referring to the the windows because that would in have been way, something that would have been part of the that the city would have done as as part of um the whole rfp process so that's, or it went out that, to bid. that wouldn't be in the, yeah, anything okay. that we would have had any, but otherwise we meet with the applicants when they first come in and they, t we talk about what, what they're doing. We go through the guidelines with them and we tell them what they need and we work with them leading up to the meeting. So we try to prepare them as much as possible that they have everything that they need so you can make the determination. Um, and then the last question I have is about signage and downtown. Um, the my understanding was there's a opportunity to work with the city with the brackets and the hanging sign above uh the the buildings or that sign hanging um underneath one or the other in the um window uh decals and things are not supposed to take up more than a certain percentage of the window they're not supposed to completely obscure or block um visibility into uh, a, a building and I know with an applicant that we had before that's a, a cliche or whatever um, we had denied that and it went to the commission and then was over we were overruled however there's other businesses going in downtown that are completely obstructing their windows um, so how does that is that a code violation is that something aren't signs supposed to come to us or how did the how does that get fixed so we don't end up with just murals down Tarpon Avenue? So our land development code on signs currently does not regulate window signs. So we don't approve it. We don't get any part of it through planning and zoning as far as any of our sign code. Window signs are not part of that. They're not in here at all. I mean, it's code. I is thought there was a percentage silent. that they can't cover a certain percentage of the window. With so they can't tint the window. They can't black the window out. But if they're using a sign, a perforated sign, I know exactly which building you're talking about, um, and I sought clarification on it. But if they're using a perforated sign, that's considered a window sign, and it is not regulated in the current code. The uh, land development code on signs is under review actively. Uh, but as of now, no window signs in the city of Harper Springs are reviewed or permitted. Can we, I know where we've been emailing you when we guys, when we think of things that should go on to our guidelines that need to be reviewed and perforated signs are new technology mm -hmm. that I think should be um, put in there so we don't end up with a downtown of murals across the whole downtown. What did That's you call hideous. Per a perforated sign? What did you call it, Dave, Mr. Bolton? I'm, I'm going to, I think that suggestion should probably go to our city attorney. Um, <coughs> Specifically because it has to deal with the sign code, and there has been a lot of um, recent decisions through the Supreme Court of the United States with regards to signs and the First Amendment. So I think that's a good suggestion. So I think if you email that to staff, they can forward it to my office, um, and we will review that and see if that's even something that, that this board could regulate um, based on the current status of the law. What, what did you, Mr. Bolton, what did you call it? A perforated? I didn't understand you. Uh, it's like when you're, you know, when you see a bus from the outside, it looks like a mural, like an attorney's office. But when you're in the bus, you can actually see out. Oh. This is where people do a mural across their whole business. I see. And you can't see in. You see a picture. But when you're in the business, you actually can see right out to the street. I see. But from outside, it looks like a yoga studio or something like I that. I see. Um, <laughs> The, and then the other thing was, how are we do? I, I know we have money budgeted. The, the city manager actually budgeted money for our design guide review. How did we, are we farming that out? Are we doing that in-house? Are we, how has that happened? Yeah, we're going to be doing that. And Michelle and I will be getting together shortly uh, to discuss that. And I know that earlier some of you had given me some feedback on what you'd like to see changed or what your frustration was with the current design guidelines. And um, so thank you for that. Um, we may be even getting some input from you as, as, as far as the RFP. If any of you know um, people who do 
revisions of design guidelines because we'll be doing up RFP. We've got a total of 20,000, I believe, that was set aside to do a revision of that. Um, so we'll be coming back to you on that. We, we haven't really started that yet, but that's something that we'll be starting now. Could I suggest that since we're the board that's going to use the design guidelines the most and the board members that have been on are pretty familiar with what the challenges are with the current design guidelines, and I have some familiarity that um, we that this board review the RFP before it be sent out. I think you would then we would be sure that it addresses the issues that keep coming up over and over and over. Exactly, and that's you know, this board is the reason why we're doing it so that it, okay. it gives you better guidance and. It addresses the things, and the material list was one of the things that has been frustrating of, you know, Hardy Board and what are acceptable alternatives and are they acceptable. So, yes, we will have it reviewed for you before it goes out so that it meets what you want. And then once it gets awarded, um, we'll probably have a session here with uh, the person who gets the bid um, to meet with you so they can get a clear picture from you of what you're looking for and working with them. And um, I know that I, I want to commend this board on on their decision on denying an application that was then overruled by the commission because we had to just bow down to this applicant. And um, unfortunately, the applicant um, is going out of business and closing their store. So now we have changes to a historical building. Um, that, And I commend this board for standing up to that applicant, and I'm sad that our commission overruled us. Um, any other comments? And we're adjourned.